Crikey mates, would you believe what we've got here? It's not a croc or a snake. Take a gander at the clever, domestically produced Taiwanese CM32 Clouded Leopard Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Their natural environment is the Taiwanese cityscape. She disguises herself as an innocent construction crane to avoid its main predator, the Chinese missile. But in reality, she's got nasty teeth with her 30 millimeter Bushmaster cannon. Oh, oh, she almost got me. Is Taiwan's domestically produced CM32 Clouded Leopard the right infantry fighting vehicle for the island's defense? It has a main gun bigger than the US Bradley, and it can carry two extra soldiers, a full squad of eight dismounted infantry, all while weighing only half as much. That said, the procurement process has been dragging on for 20 years now, and production has run into all kinds of setbacks, including shocking legal accusations of Chinese espionage. So, what does the CM32 tell us about Taiwan's unique military industrial complex? Will those speed bumps slow the Clouded Leopard down? What kind of weapon systems and capabilities make this vehicle a great choice for Taiwan? I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Let's find out. The reason mechanized vehicles are so important for Taiwan's military is because if there was an invasion, they wouldn't know for sure where the assault was coming from, the north or south of the island. This means being able to quickly reposition and reinforce different regions would be key to their success. The CM-32 began as a replacement for the CM-31, which Taiwan has used since about 1992. The CM-31 had two less wheels at six and was mainly just an armored personnel carrier. It was a variant of Belgium's BDX, first developed in the 1970s, so it was an aging technology. But this is what helped move over 130,000 ground troops around the island. The CM-31 served as the primary backbone of Taiwan's mechanized infantry forces, but after only about a decade of service, the Republic of China Army, aka Taiwan's ground forces, realized something was terribly wrong. Sure, the CM-31 could transport troops, but it didn't have two buzzwords that are very important. No modularity and no real firepower, no lethality. What this means is it wasn't very customizable, meaning upgrading it wasn't user friendly. And second, you only had like a 50 cal or a Mark 19 on top, no turret. The fact was the armored protection on the vehicle for its crew and dismounts was questionable, only stopping small arms rounds. The CM-31's role was more of an armored personnel carrier instead of a full-on infantry fighting vehicle. Taiwan needed more than a battle taxi, and its usefulness in combat wasn't on par with China's equivalents at the time. But first, I have some very important information to discuss from this video sponsor, Top Class Actions, a consumer news site. Like most of us in the military, we have our favorite and not so favorite duty stations. But what we don't expect is to be harmed by something from the base itself. If you were stationed at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, it's possible you may have been exposed to harmful water on or around the military base that could have been contaminated with dangerous chemicals that can cause serious health concerns, including cancer, leukemia, and Parkinson's disease. In 2022, the Biden administration signed the Camp Lejeune Justice Act making it possible for veterans to take legal action against the federal government for injuries and illness related to Camp Lejeune water contamination. And because of this legislation, groups like Top Class Actions are working to help affected veterans and their families get justice and to make sure this kind of thing never happens again. If you appear to qualify, you may be contacted by email and telephone by a law firm with whom Top Class Actions has a relationship to discuss further. After only a decade with the CM31 in limited production, the RCA began a design initiative to replace it starting in 2002. Design of the new CM32 was given to Taiwan's very own Ordnance Readiness Development Center, their government-based design bureau that serves as the primary technology research and development group in the country. Work was also eventually done by the National Chung Sang Institute of Science and Technology, which is an important part of Taiwan's military industrial complex. They've been around for 54 years, since 1969, which was actually a major turning point for Taiwan's defense strategy, because before that they only really had a poorly organized national defense industry. Chongsang Institute is seen as key by their people for retaining independence and sovereignty. It's true that Taiwan relies on the United States Armed Forces for a lot of its big ticket weapon systems like fighter jets. However, their president today, Tsai Ing-wen, has been leading a push for them to have greater emphasis on Taiwanese design and manufactured arms. The CM-32 is a prime example of this new push. 
The decision to create the CM-32 armored vehicle was part of a military reformation program in the late 1990s and early 2000s. It sought to cut troop numbers, but to increase the mobility and firepower of units. This emphasis on mobility meant that the design for future armored vehicles would need to be wheeled rather than tracked. Production started in 2007 and everything seemed like it was going all according to plan. It's like that part early in the movie where you realize everything's working out too much and, and something needs to go wrong. This is where some of the problems with domestically producing weapons rears its ugly head. Because in 2012, that's when the Chungheng Electric and Manufacturing Corporation, or CHEM, was awarded the contract for whole production. We're gonna stick with CHEM because there's no way I'm gonna try to pronounce that name five times. After CHEM produced the first series of hulls for the program, a total of 17 major deficiencies were identified by Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense. These included oil leaks, replacement parts not being interchangeable, the fact that if it wasn't driven at least three miles twice a month, it would stop working, just like my car, and major flaws in the steel armor around the hull. I guess in Taiwan, their privates do actually need to check for soft spots in the armor. These setbacks caused all production of the vehicle to be suspended while the problems were addressed. After these deficiencies were rectified, Taiwan's military reorganization center launched an investigation into how so many issues were found on vehicles already in mass production. It was eventually found that CHEM had illegally subcontracted manufacturing processes of major components to China. You know, the country this vehicle was designed to fight. That's like trusting a criminal to watch your stack of gold and being surprised when it's gone. It's not even uncommon many defense companies do this because they actually might not have any nefarious intentions here, they were simply trying to save money. However, not only did this lead to substandard quality, but it constituted a major break in operational security to the Chinese, giving them direct access to classified information on the capabilities and design of the CM-32. This resulted in 60 arrests in 2015, of which 33 were prosecuted with corruption, fraud, espionage charges, forcing a revamping of the manufacturing process for the future vehicles, and this helped explain this long 20-year development cycle. But Taiwan wasn't gonna let these little minor speed bumps deter them. As of today, 378 of the 683 planned CM32s have made it into Taiwan's ground forces and ranks, these being the APC and IFE variants. That number might even reach 1,400 by the time they're finished, which shows just how many different roles they plan on using the CM32 for. If all goes according to plan, the CM32 could be this light tank and infantry carrier. In fact, the facility chief, Wang Hung, said the plant located in Gigi can produce six vehicles a month, which is pretty impressive. Also, side note, Gigi looks absolutely beautiful and peaceful. It's located in a protected mountain center of the island. That's where I'd like to live if I was manufacturing armored metal killing machines. But how can we expect them to perform in a fight? From the get-go, the focus of the CM-32 was speed and maneuverability, above all else. Hence its nickname, Clouded Leopard, a species of large, insanely fast feline once common on the island nation. The animal is revered by some of Taiwan's indigenous people who consider it sacred. I think it's pretty cool that they gave their domestically produced vehicle a name that ties into their culture. It's like wildlife in disguise instead of scales and feathers. We're talking steel camouflage. This butte is disguised as a scrap heap. It looks like a pile of rubbish in the urban jungle city of Taipei. But hang on a tick, we've gotta be quiet as a kangaroo on our tippy toes, not to startle her. Gotta be careful not to get too close to it. The US San Francisco CM32 has evolved somewhat differently. The high speed of 74 miles per hour makes it one of the fastest armored vehicles in the world. This is also a good logistical strategy to go with given the harsh nature of Taiwanese terrain, which brings up the question, why didn't they go for a tracked armored vehicle instead? Taiwan's geography is roughly split into two sections. To the east are a series of relatively flat plains where 90% of the population resides, while the remaining western part of the country is largely densely vegetative mountains. Because the east is so heavily populated, extensive road and highway networks cover the entire region. This was a large reason as to why Wield was chosen over tracked, as they are able to make better use of improved surfaces than tracked vehicles. Realistically, any amphibious invasion on the island would have to be from the west, and the CM-32 with its high speed would be able to quickly react to any breaches in their border. This is an especially crucial factor in that it would help prevent any landing party from establishing a foothold on the land. 
preventing a stronger push via a main effort force into the island. While wheeled vehicles generally do not have off-road performance seen by tracked vehicles, the Clouded Leopard was designed with heavy off-road in mind. Taiwan is subject to tropical monsoon seasons, meaning heavy rains during the summer months lead to flooding and complicated water crossings. Track vehicles need to weigh a lot more. The Bradley is now 40 tons, with the CM32 weighing in at only 22 tons, a trade-off of less protection and armor, but it's more mobile. During performance testing in the early and mid-2000s, it was noted, however, that the CM32 excelled in covering all terrain from flooded out agricultural fields, unstable river crossings, and was even used during 2008 to assist in urban flood recovery operations. Its off-road success is largely due to a very specific attributes such as independent suspension systems, hydraulics, and independent brake cylinders, just to name a few. Not only that, but an operational range of 497 miles, the CM32 would be able to drive from the southernmost point of the island to the northernmost point and back on a single tank of gas, greatly relieving logistical strain on its operational use and freeing up support units to focus on more resource-intensive efforts, such as refueling tanks or resupplying anti-air batteries. Because Taiwan's military is specifically postured for a defensive war inside their own territory, it has allowed them to create the CM-32 to be tailor-made for these needs, rather than having to be a jack of all trades, as seen in most Western or even Chinese designs. But a huge focus of the development for the CM32 is a personal favorite feature of mine, modularity. The CM32 is designed as the base hull platform, which can easily be fitted with a number of different capabilities, all within the same vehicle, giving it the ability to either have a 30mm cannon or eventually even a 105mm anti-tank gun in multiplying the capabilities of the Taiwanese army without the need for additional costly development cycles to achieve those same goals. If we take a quick look at how the Taiwanese army is set up, this design choice actually makes a lot of sense. The RCA consists of five army corps that's largely centered around their mechanized infantry forces. So the CM32 from the very beginning was designed as a happy family of vehicles with different models handling different roles. The end goal of the project would be to not only replace its aging APCs, but also the 700 M41 tanks, which were widely obsolete by modern standards. This formation makes it one of the most flexible of any military fighting formations, able to handle any kind of target thrown at them given the right strategy. The CM32 was accomplished on the cheap. It only cost about 21.9 million USD to develop, which is an absolute bargain in military R&D. That, that is a slash prices right there. Each unit runs about $2 million. That's half the similar American Striker. Though unlike most Western crews of three, the CM32 is only crewed by two, a driver located in front and a commander gunner who has high intensity thermal sights to allow for long range spotting and lasing targets and gives the crew the ability to visually engage targets up to eight kilometers away. So you could use these thermal optics to pretty much look straight across the Taiwan Strait and see Xi Jinping waving back at you. Not really, but maybe that's a good thing. Gangs all over the world would love this next feature because the turret is fully stabilized, which allows you to do what I like to call combat drive-by shootings. It can hit targets while traveling at speeds of 74 miles per hour over hard top paved roads. I would feel bad for the dismounts in the back though if you're going that fast because anything over 30 kilometers per hour in a military vehicle feels like riding a spaceship re-entering the atmosphere. Protecting the eight infantrymen that it carries in the back is a full body welded steel set of armor rated at withstanding armor piercing 7.62 millimeter rounds at point blank range. That might sound to you like not very good, very bad armor, but remember we're talking about the base vehicle because the CM32 has the unique ability to add secondary armor consisting of 25 millimeter composite steel that can be attached to all or just parts of the hull, which can be added or removed by simply bolting on plates. So big deal, you can add armor, right? But it's not that simple. Typically, additional armor kits for Western style vehicles require a near complete overhaul of the vehicle to install. This additional armor provides protection from rounds up to 14.7 millimeter, as well as 155 millimeter artillery rounds. The space nature of the armor, meaning that it's spaced out apart, prevents the risk of spalling. Spalling is a phenomenon which external impacts of armor 
cause the backside of the metal to fragment and ricochet inside the vehicle. It goes without saying that jagged pieces of metal bouncing around your hull at the speed of fired bullets is not a great way to start anyone's day. The introduction of this vehicle also marks the first time the Taiwanese military has integrated a full battle tracking system using the GTF-CS it's an unlimited network data link. It gives the vehicle commander a digital view of the entire battlefield. Location of friendly and enemy units are there. So just like how you point out and mark when there's police on your route for Google Maps, you do the same with this. If grenade launchers and M240 machine guns aren't scratching that high caliber itch for you though, a variant of the CM32, the CM34, comes equipped with the Mark 44 Bushmaster II 30 mm chain gun. This weapon system elevates the CM32 from the role of armor personnel carrier to infantry fighting vehicle. There are a number of additional variants currently in development for eventual adoption, but these variants are different because due to the weapon systems that they have, they're not gonna carry additional infantry in the back. These will include that 105 millimeter mobile gun system variant, similar in use to the Striker or the new M10 Booker that the US Army just adopted. The C12 engine cranks out 450 horsepower, giving the track a 21.4 horsepower to ton ratio, higher than most Western equivalent designs, with high maneuverability at a cheaper cost. Keeping the American theme, it runs an American Allison MD 4560P automatic transition. The decision to use commercial off-the-shelf engine components, not typically used in military hardware, might be a bit unorthodox, but it ensures that replacement parts are easily obtained with fairly straightforward supply chains rather than often overly complex government ones. And current reports describe it as running quietly, being near silent from less than 200 meters away. This gives the CM32 the ability of silent watch. This is a big capability that all new vehicles want to have going forward. It, what it basically means is that weaponry and optics can be battery powered without the need for the engine to be actively running. This both conserves fuel and greatly reduces the vehicle's thermal signature from enemy IR optics. And that's a huge part of future warfare is you gotta, gotta reduce that signature with all the sensors out there. With that specifically in mind, we can see how the CM32 would largely be used and by looking at the vehicles it's replacing. If we look at the role of Taiwan's current armored fleet, its 20th century relic tanks were never really a focus on replacement. Rather, they were subject to a series of upgrades in terms of armor and optics, most sporting 105 mm cannon. While in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight against modern tanks, 105 cannon is, is no longer considered adequate, it's important to remember that the primary targets that these older tanks and the CM32 were designed to fight were primarily amphibious craft. Might as they try, the PRC can't configure a Type 99 to cross an ocean or come off a landing craft, hit the beach, and still have full armor on it. So that means that any targets actually hitting the beach will be vulnerable to smaller caliber rounds. The emphasis on both the 30 mm Bushmaster and the 105 mm MGS variant give Taiwan a greater level of flexibility in dealing with lighter amphibious targets, such as the Chinese Type 05 or Type 08, which would be highly vulnerable while attempting to embark onto a beachhead. Second, while Taiwan has an extensive fixed defensive network of artillery and missile sites, those are gonna be the first targets that China attempts to destroy using indirect and guided ballistic fires. The small and easily concealed nature of the CM32 gives it a much better chance of evading any initial barrages on the island, while their maneuverability and flexibility will then allow them to respond to any landing craft at whatever point China decides to attack. The CM32 retains a more traditional mechanized infantry role, working in tandem as a combined armed force with heavier tanks and dismounted infantry. Taiwan has managed to massively upgrade their fighting strength, strategic capability, and defensive posture with the introduction of this vehicle, and by extension, their ability to defend their homeland. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching. I wanna give you two options today of which you could choose neither, but if one of these videos piques your interest, please check it out. Thank you.